My name is Judy Worth, and I work at the Center for Disabilities and Development um, and the University Center on Excellence in Disability, or whatever I am. And um, I get to do a lot of different things, of which none of it am I going to talk about today. <laughs> That's usually how it is. They don't want to know what I do. Just tell me what you think. No. Um, I'm, I want to talk about how do we how do we make it through this life that we've chosen? You know, whether, I mean, stress comes from every direction. I just have to turn on Fox News and I know I'm done, you know? Um, any, yeah, I mean, I, I try not to watch television because it, it stresses me. And um, so I guess I want to start by doing a little character assessment. I mean, assassination, assessment, I mean. So we're going to do a little, we're going to take a little test here. I need a couple volunteers here to help me. I, I'm going pretty simple because more paper would just stress you out, you know? And I'm trying to reduce stress. So, you know, they changed, they changed my title because I thought it was very clever. Catherine says, I need a clever title. And I said, together we can can. How many of you remember what the can can dance is? I didn't have a clue, but I knew it was a dance. That is apparently the can can. I'm not going there for you, okay? Um, so I want you, this is a short little personality test. I want you to take a couple minutes here, and what you're going to do is you're going to read each of those little categories, and you're going to score four, three, two, one. The one that most describes you to the one that least describes you. And if anybody needs help with reading, let me know. Um, I, I, I should qualify for you guys that um, in addition to all the things I do in the world of disability and education, um, I work with, I teach, dog, I teach puppy classes. So, you know, pup, puppy classes, dog classes. So in the event that you should need to bark, pee on the floor, or poop on the floor, that does not distress me much either, okay? And um, I do best with a dialogue. Um, I said this with no joking <laughs> intended. You never know where I'm gonna go within the context of a presentation and you can guide me. Um, because really, things like this, especially sessions like this, are designed to be for you. Um, and for me to impart my wisdom or lack thereof, or perhaps give you a little bit of inspiration or hope as you go into next week or tomorrow or tonight when you pick up your kids, OK? Yeah. <laughs> no wonder you're stressed. You can't find the kids. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like, that, it's like that, that, that card I saw that, oh my god, I forgot to have kids. <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> I can't find, oh, I didn't have them. It's all good. All right, so let's, let's see how we did on this test here, OK? I think we're close. Who had the highest score in the L's? Raise your hands. L's. When you added them down, straight down that column, who had the highest in the L's? OK, so I got a, I got a few of you. That's OK. It's OK. It's not going to qualify or disqualify you for anything. This puts you in the lion category. My lions tend to be decisive. They're leaders. They love to solve problems, you know. They like to lead the pride, OK? They are people who like new adventures and new opportunities. So if you scored high in this, and you're, you're going to go, this is really stupid. And then you're going to go, oh my gosh, this does sound like me. <laughs> All right, so tell me, who scored high in the O's? Who was at their highest? You too. OK, OK. That makes sense. Now I know. <laughs> now I know. All right, so what do you think you are? The octopus? No, you're the otters. You're the otters. You are my playful creatures. You are excitable. I know that if I need to get someone going, it's going to be right back there is where I'm heading. Trouble sits back there. My leaders are going to be over here. The ones who keep me in line are going to be here. I can't wait to see where the rest of you fall in. The, rest, the vast majority of the rest of you are golden retrievers. I know this. You're the Gs. <laughs> OK? Um, the fun seekers are the people who are cheerleaders, the people who keep us excited, the people who, for whatever reason, they walk down the hall and you go, oh my gosh, she's coming. <laughs> and it, we're classically conditioned to chuckle when we see them. They play such a critical role within our lives and our organizations. If you don't have one, go find one. OK? Who scored high in the G's? Yep, there we go. 
There's it. Could I have predicted it better? Golden Retrievers are right here. That is the G's, the Golden Retrievers. Um, golden Retrievers are loyal, committed listeners. They're empathetic. They will follow you into the fires of hell um, like a good Golden Retriever. And so many of us in the helping professions are Golden Retrievers because that's what a Golden does. Okay. All right. So, uh, who who who's a bee? <laughs> You're going. Oh my gosh! I don't want to know what it is. Right? <laughs> no, it's a very good thing because without you, I'm in a world of hurt. You are a beaver. You are the worker. You need things to be done right, correctly. You're my you're my quality assurance person. You're the person who makes sure I don't get in trouble while I'm jumping and running down the halls, barking and peeing on the floor. <laughs> okay. Um, because I come out high in the O and the G range, the otter and the, the golden, they tie. Now, the reason I think this is important is because, you know what stresses us out the most in the world? Anybody want to guess? No, we stress ourselves out. <laughs> we stress ourselves out. It's like, if I could just settle down and get my work done, I'm so far behind right now. If I could just engage my inner beaver, it would be so much better. But instead, the otter and the golden just can't control themselves. <laughs> it's, it's just dangerous for all of us. OK? Um, and so the reason, I, I'm not sure why they asked me to come. Um, <laughs> but the reason I chose to come was because, um, let's, I just take a moment and do a quick inventory in your head of all the places where you're giving care. Um, how many of you have, um, are working in jobs where you're providing support and care to other people? Raise your hands. Okay, those of you who didn't raise your hands, tell me what you do. Huh? Oh, God bless you. <laughs> well, what, what do, those of you who didn't raise your hands in, in being caring professionals, what do you do? Aren't you making dig digital magazines to care for my intellectual needs? Um, yeah, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Go with it. Go with me. You're a good man, Peter. <laughs> what about you, Kate? I work in a library. You work in a library. I mean, there isn't anything that we do that doesn't touch the lives of other people. So I'm going to say in your work, you're all doing things that are helping and caring for other people. Because, Peter, if I don't like my digital magazines, guess what? You're out of business. OK? OK, so. Okay, so we covered work. Oh, Lord, how many of you are taking care of people at home? Wait, who didn't raise their hands? Raise your hands if you didn't raise your hand. <laughs> Let's see if that works. It's Saturday after Cinco de Mayo. What more do I need? Um, because if you're not taking care of someone at home, that means you're not taking care of yourself. We got a problem. Okay, we have a problem. Um, I, I, I disclose, because it'll come up in the course of our dialogue today. Um, my 83-year-old father lives with me. My 16-year-old dog died. My mother had the audacity to die. Um, and, uh, and these were all things that I've been taking care of for the past five, six years. And one of them just won't go away. My dad, oh no. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Because for me, humor is how I release my stress, OK? And so part of what you have to know is your temperament. If you don't know your temperament, you're going to default to wherever it is that you gravitate towards. And soon, you're going to be consumed by that. Because if the otter and golden retriever in me get carried away, the beaver never gets engaged. And I don't get things done. And I should not say that when my boss is in the room. <laughs> Let's move on, kids. All right. Now, I always take a calculated risk. Um, like I told you, I have not a clue what's going to come out of my mouth. And um, this is a book I read every day. Those of you who've. You get, a couple of you have seen me pull out this book before and go, OK, let's see what it says today. This is called The Book of Awakening by Mark Nepo. It has a daily reading in it. And I want to read to you today. It is remarkable. It's like God wrote this book for me whenever, whenever I had to present. So today is called Twig and Nest. Okay. I think I could turn and live with animals. They do not sweat or whine about their condition. Not one is dissatisfied. That was Walt Whitman. Okay. And Mark Nepo is a poet. Um, 
And so he's got a short little blurb here, which I'll take the liberty to read to you, because I think it applies to what we're talking about. It, it was a very small thing, watching a robin carry a twig too big for its nest. It tried once, then twice to use it, and somehow, with its very small bird brain, it knew it was no good. It simply flew off and picked up another. I went and found the twig. There wasn't a mark on it. I rolled it in my hand and thought of all the times I've labored to try to make things too big fit. So often, what we want is like that twig, too big to be of use, and we stay lodged in an unhappiness created by holding onto something that can't complete our nest. It was humbling to watch a small bird work, singing as it went, leaving what it couldn't use as it found it. If we could only treat each other with such simple kindness. And when I think about how do we manage stress, how do we navigate this world of craziness that we reside in? Oh my gosh, Nepo's got it again, be the bird. Figure out if that twig's gonna work. If it doesn't, gently set it aside. If it does, use it. Um, so with that, let's see where we go. <laughs> you guys ready? And please jump in, argue with me. I love a good argument, okay? Um, that doesn't stress me. How do you know? How can you tell when you guys are wearing down? Get ready, Martha, they're gonna go fast. How do you know when you're wearing down? Yeah, right there, right there, Miss Smock. <coughs> I, I just, I can't, I can't s summon the solutions. Like, I, I don't, oh, that sounds terrible. I have no idea. You just keep beating that just, twig just right into the nest, no, right? No, boom, no boom, ambition. Boom. Just like, oh, that's terrible. Okay, and then you give up. Yep. I get aggravated. Aggravated and angry. Autopilot. Autopilot, yes. You just go into, what were you again? Retriever. Yes, you just go into, I'm going to fix everything I can. I'm going to fix everything I can. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. I'm done. Yep, you collapse. Gotcha. I don't get out of bed. You shut down. How about you? You've got one. I can tell it. It's just right there on the tip of your tongue. Spit it out, girl. <laughs> well, I start late to be just so worried about everything. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. That you become so anxious that you just spin out of control. Yes. Does anybody experience anything uniquely different? Yeah, we all do. And these things start to, when you start to look at this checklist and you start checking these off and you go, oh my gosh, I'm doing all this. Hypervigilance, my beavers like to do that. They become, I've got to watch everything. Can't miss it, can't miss it, can't miss it. And they start to go crazy, okay? Um, the pervasive hopelessness, that's the one that distresses me the most, is when we go, oh, well, you know, we can't control what they do in Washington. Oh my gosh, the state changed this. Or you wouldn't believe what my boss is making me do now or my child, or, you know, we move in this place where it's not worth even trying anymore. That's when we're in trouble, okay? And it starts here, but it will permeate organizations. I think every now and then it starts in the organization and it comes in. It doesn't matter, but when you feel it, I'm gonna tell you there's only one thing you can control in this world. What is it? Oh, let's hear a resigning. What is it? Your you guys are wuss. <laughs> Man. I know it's sunshiny out, and I know that you've been here all day, but you gotta take control of this session or I'm gonna have to. <laughs> oh wait, I'm supposed to. Okay, yeah, I mean, I think the thing that's remarkable is if we look at this and we go, oh my gosh. I mean, I know this will be a surprise to you, but when I feel stressed, I eat more. I think I've had a high stress life. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, and, and I'll find myself, every Casey calls me. And it's like, and when you're on the road, that's not a healthy thing, you know? And that's when I go, oh, pay attention, something's up. Because I'm not terribly in tune with me, but I am in tune with <laughs> when I've spent the $20 that was in my pocket. Where did that go? Oh, Casey's, and then Casey. Oh, got it. Okay, pay attention. Because it's a moment we quit paying attention that trouble happens for us, for our families, and for our lives. How many of you get to this point where you go, I, I can't do it, I, I'm just not good enough, that pervasive helplessness, hopelessness? What do you do? What do you do to get out of that? Anybody got a magic bullet? Years of therapy. <laughs> Years of therapy. I like it. What else? Yes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so kind of cool down and be back. Oh, you eat popsicles. Yeah. I love it. And those could be locale too. This could work. I'm taking notes. Hold on. Okay. 
wine. 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 Do you mean wine or Both. wine? Both. <laughs> <laughs> you mean wine or wine? Both, okay. And do it both simultaneously, right? Yes. Okay. That's my husband. Yes. <laughs> I listened to Brenny Brown. Okay. Find just something little I can be successful at, and then it just mm -hmm. kind of gives you that little boost. Become the master of small wins. Yes. Yes. And, you know, and I liked this. I saw this, and I just had to, I just had to include it. Um, I'm so tired of avoiding change that I might as well just go with it. Because usually our stress comes from change. Um, I think we hit times in our life where the routine of our lives create the stress. But for most of us, it's the change that we're avoiding. We're comfortable in our discomfort. Okay? That just looked like fun. This is how you know you're in trouble. But so what do we do? We've defined we're in trouble. Well, I have to go to some of my favorite stuff. I am a creature of habit. I, how many of you have seen the fish training? Have been part of that or anything? I love it. I maintain that twice a year, okay, once a year, we should all get together and watch Patch Adams. Because Patch Adams to me embodies the fish, the fish notion. It consists of four principles. First one, oh, I missed my clicker, is choose your attitude. It is the only thing you have control of. I can go, I, I, when my mother passed away, I'm an only child, so it was me. Did I mention I'm an only child? It was me. So I walk into the funeral home, and I'm grinning. And, and I'm not sure why I was grinning, but I was. And that funeral home director walks up and he said, hey, girl. It was in southern Missouri, so everyone's, hey, girl. Hey, girl. You got it going here. We're going to deal with this. And from that day forward, they, they t it was the easiest thing I've ever done. I mean, in terms of logistics. Um, so it is, it is your attitude. It doesn't matter what situation you walk into. Um, and sometimes people think I'm crazy. And I am, and I'm OK with that. Because I can walk into bad situations and kind of go, well, let's just see what happens. Like today, you know? Oh, wait, that's you guys who are suffering. OK? So choose your attitude. It's the one thing you have control of. Second key principle is play. I'll hit on this more in a second. And I believe in play. I believe in puppy play. I believe in people play. I believe that play is critical to our survival. And it's the one thing we're so willing to cast aside. OK? Third one is make people's day. One of my favorite things to do in trainings like this, when I have a homogenous group from an from a organization, and one of the things I'm going to ask you to do when you go back to work on Monday or when you go home tonight is take a post-it note and leave someone in your house, leave someone who you work with a note that says, Dang, I like your smile, or something. A simple little thing like that can change the flavor of somebody's day and somebody's life. And more importantly, it takes care of you. It's all about taking care of you, because it really all is all about me. Make someone's day. Even if it's making eye contact, introducing yourself, doing something that makes them shake their head and go, I don't know where they find these people. And the last one is be present. If you have my time for 15 minutes, I want to give it to you for 15 minutes. You guys know this lady knew me when I was 17. 17. We worked in a restaurant together. I was well-behaved, wasn't I? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> How come my childhood memories are a little thwarted? Um, attitude. Every day, when you come in and you're having a rough day, ask yourself, this is the attitude you want. I remember a day with a friend of mine who was having a hard day. We said, let's go blow bubbles. The world got better. The world got better in that moment, OK? Choose your attitude. It is the only thing you have any control of. Play, 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 and play some more. Play is a healer. I want to show you this. Play is an interesting thing. Oh, wait, this isn't what I thought it was. But I'll, I'll show you this anyway. What do we have here? <laughs> Uh, no, those are, those are Siberian Huskies, I think. Could be Malamutes, but I think they're Huskies. Um, this is not looking so good um, because it's the middle of winter in Alaska, and the bears haven't eaten for a while. And those dogs are chained up, I believe. Um, oh, sorry, guys. If you're squirmish, don't look because this is kind of, oh, wait. Kisses. Kisses. Play. Play is a universal language. These two creatures should not be playing. There's no reason that bear is starving and that dog can't get away. You can see the chain there. 
that dog can't get away. It's dinner on a rope. And play crosses language. It crosses disability. It crosses every barrier we know. Except for when you play like a golden retriever sometimes, and you're playing with a beaver who doesn't think it's as funny as you do, OK? Um, but it does. It is a language that crosses barriers. And so when we play, we can create peace in ways that we didn't think we could. Okay? There is a polar bear being submissive to a husky. Go help me. Um, and it's not just an activity. It's a state of mind. You can be playful when you're going in to figure out what urn you're going to put your mother in. You can be playful when you are going through a divorce. You can be playful in hard situations. You know, we make, we make life hard. It's as hard or as easy as we want it. None of that's easy to say, and don't, tell, don't get me wrong, I crash. But I can, I can pick myself up because I'll just start playing again, whether it's with my dog or with my friends, okay? Benefits? You get creative. You know, when you're stuck, this is my answer. I have, um, I have been blessed by having the very best colleagues most of my career. Um, and we play together, and we work with kids. Most of my job is spent working with young adults who are transitioning from school to work. 17 to 21 year olds, come on, is there any time in your life when you know less and more at the same time? <laughs> you know, these guys know everything, and they're ready to take on the world, but they have no skills. <laughs> and they make every bad decision that there is to find. And it's usually my job to fix it. Um, you know, that's what parents would want. And these kids are going, well, I didn't mean to get in trouble. I was like, oh, you are, <laughs> you know. Um, and my colleagues and I would play. We would get silly. And people would walk by our offices and go, what are they doing? Do they work? And yes, we did. We worked really hard. But we played really hard. Because then when we started playing and carrying on, and we had Nerf guns <laughs> in the workplace. <laughs> We just don't tell everything we have in the workplace. And we would start playing, and all of a sudden, we'd get past whatever that hurdle was of that stress, that, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? We've got an employer who's mad at us, a kid who's in jail, and parents who say they're going to sue the school district because we screwed up. You know? And so we've got, we've got Nerf bullets flying around the office, and all of a sudden, someone goes, why don't we try this? Because you get past all the worry and everything else. So play creates imagination. It builds our confidence. It builds teamwork. That's why we teach children to play. That's why we teach puppies to play. Puppies who play together don't bite each other so hard. People who play together don't bite each other so hard. That third thing I told you about, make people's day. You are not going to remember anything I say today. You're going to remember how you felt. If you leave here feeling well, you're going to go, she's cool. Um, you may not remember a word I say, except for you know the bad word I drop every now and then, OK? You know, but I am going to tell you one of the things that, that I heard many years ago. And I think for those of us who are in helping professions, those of you who are family members, you're going to go, oh, yes. Um, we have to deliver bad news sometimes. There's just no two ways about it. Sometimes I have to say, you know, it's not likely that your child's going to read. You know, they're a 12th grader, and they read at the second grade level. They're not going to read well. Sorry. OK? But, or if you're a physical therapist, you may be working with an athlete who's injured themselves who's not going to play professional ball now. There's a lot of hard news that comes out of our work, OK? Or it could be a funding issue, you know? We don't have the money so that you can have a drop-in counselor every day. OK, whatever the case is. But I heard this over at the hospital many, many years ago, and it's so profoundly true. Bad news delivered poorly. Bad news delivered poorly is unforgivable. Bad news delivered well is unforgettable. Okay, You're not going to forget that I said you're never going to play basketball. But you're going to remember the sensitivity in how I did it. But if I just walk in and say, don't be a dumb Dora. You're not going to play basketball. You racked up your knee. It ain't happening. Or, you know, I, 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 always, I often tell the story of, of my gynecologist <laughs> Women, we know these are our favorite people in the whole world. And we're in the most comfortable positions of the world. Guys, you know this too, right? Um, and I'll never forget, I, I'd go see my, my, my general practitioner. And she'd go, 
Now, Junie, you know you need to lose about 100 pounds. And I go, yeah, come on, give me something for my sinuses and let's move on. <laughs> and uh, my gynecologist, you know, when she has you in that most sensitive moment and uh, where you're feeling totally confident in yourself and everything else, she said, wow, Judy, do you think you could lose 10 pounds this year? And I about came out of them stirrups and said, you mean I only need to learn to lose 10 pounds? And she says, oh, God, no, but it's a great way to start. Well, it makes sense. And it's like, what a nice way to put that. I can tackle 10 pounds. I'm not touching 100 pounds. Forget it. You know, don't ask me to jog around, jog across the country, maybe to the mailbox and back. And then once I'm to the mailbox and back, then build on it. But that's, that's how we make people stay. That's how we make ourselves memorable. Next principle is be present. Be present. If you're going to be there, be there. If you're not going to be there, say, I can't do this right now. But if you're going to be there, give someone your full attention. And we are so bad about doing this with children, with people with disabilities, with our spouses, and oftentimes with each other. It's like I'm starting to go, well, you're just going to go, well, let's see what time is it. Ooh, hey, what's for dinner tonight? I think maybe we could stop on the way back. You know, there's that one place in Grinnell. You know, you're, you're starting to go someplace else. And if somebody has an hour of your time, they deserve it. And if you can't give it, say you can't give it. There's nothing wrong with saying, I really care about you. And as I care, matter of fact, I care about you so much that right now I can't be with you. I've got all these other things sparking here. And that's OK. That's respect, OK? You got to take care of yourself, bottom line. Got to take care of yourself. Take care of your physiological needs, you know, mass loss order here. No news to This isn't new information for anybody, is it? You've seen this 100,000 times. Well, I want to include it because we forget. We forget when we become managers, when we become leaders, we forget to do this stuff. We forget this. Oh, I forgot to eat lunch today. Oh, wait, four hours of sleep isn't enough? I thought I was doing well, OK? When this starts to crumble, the whole thing comes down. And it's the first thing we cast aside. And I'm looking at some of you specifically, because I know, I know what you do, OK? But here's what I love. It's the conspiracy of hope. As long as you have hope, you can go forward. I don't care what your hope is. It doesn't even have to be real. But as long as you have that conspiracy, then we can go with the audacity of action. Because it's great to have hope and dreams. How many of you have big dreams that have gone unrealized? <laughs> How many of us have taken action to move towards those dreams? Good. There's some people who didn't raise their hands. And that's where, that's where we have to pay attention. OK? Because that's when despair starts to come in and when we start to get exhausted. And part of building hope, I read a book um, not long ago about a guy who was in foster care. Foster care is horrible, has been horrible. It may not be so bad now, but the, the people who write books about foster care write horrible books. The people who had great experiences in foster care are not writing books about it. I don't know why. So if you were in foster care and you had a great experience, please write the book because it's not there. Um, but he went from place to place to place. And he said there was one person in his life who made a difference. It was a social worker, case manager, who every time she came to see him, she said, you know, you are full of potential and I see something awesome coming out of you. Every time she saw him, that was how they finished their conversation. He's now a multimillionaire. And what does he remember? Her and those words. You can make a huge difference in people's lives by believing in them, OK? I include this because one of my mentors was a guy named John McGee. He uh, taught gentle teaching, which is a strategy for behavioral um, therapy, which is based on unconditional love. You know, how many of you have done stuff with behavior, with differential reinforcement, all that stuff? Some of you? OK. His whole premise was that he needed to teach people these basic things, that they're safe, that they're loved, teach people how to give love back. That's one that, you know, as, as I work with these young adults, I always maintain the most important thing I'm teaching them is how to have an adult relationship. You know, in the year that I work with kids, they're probably not going to jump into their career. How many of you, when you were 19 years old, knew what you were going to do and stayed there forever? Anybody? Yeah, it's not going to happen. But my hope is that 
in the time I work with them, I teach them about work, about responsibility, and more importantly, how to have an adult relationship. Somebody who you can argue with, you can discuss with, and you can trust. But Dr. McGee, he would take the most aggressive people, those people who were biting, hitting, kicking, pinching, all the fun stuff, Instead of using CPI or MANT on them, he would move in closer. He would just get right close. Because the truth of the matter is, is, when I'm right here, she can't hit me as hard as she can when she's a full arm's length away. And he could teach that I don't go away. I'm here. I'm safe. There is no harm from me. You're kind of freaking out, aren't you? No. You should. <laughs> <laughs> OK? And that's what he taught. Now, the reason I share this with you, you guys are going, how does this have to do with stress? I think we have to do this with ourselves. I think we have to do this with ourselves. Oh, you made a sad face back there. Me? No. Miss Shaw. I have no very control over my facial expression. <laughs> <laughs> it just happens, right? <laughs> so this is, I think this starts with you. If you don't feel safe with you, how can you make anybody else feel safe with you? If you don't feel loved, how can you make somebody else help someone else feel loved? If you can't trust yourself, how can you trust? How can anybody else trust you? Okay. I love this. The audacity of action. Sometimes we have to take risks. We have to tackle big things. And sometimes we have to be fearless. But you know what? That is the audacity of action. And there are going to be things in front of you, whether it's your family member, whether it's your life, your finances, your job, your spouse, whatever. <laughs> there are going to be things that feel like mountains in front of you. And if we just keep walking around or running away, we're never going to get there. We're never going to reach that hope. That's, this is what causes us to give up hope. And when we give up hope, then we get stressed. So what can you do? What can you do? To deal with stress. What do you, let's, I want to hear what you guys are doing to deal with stress. I heard wine. But I mean, what, what sort of things do you have in your daily routine that feeds your soul? Tell myself if it's not important to my dog, then it's really not that important. Okay. The dog cares that we're all together in the house, that the house is there, that there's food and water. So, so if the dog's not worried about it, I shouldn't be worried about it. Perfect. I don't really have an answer. Okay, you're going to have to come up with one before you can leave today. Or you're going to be really stressed. Because that's one of the things I want. I want you to make a commitment to something that you're going to do when you go home and you leave here today. This is worthless. This is a worthless discussion if I just tell you all these pipe dreams. If you don't make a commitment to go home, and whether it's walk to the mailbox with your dog, or whether it's to write in a journal, or whether it's to drink a beer, every night. Whatever it is, you have to do something to take care of yourselves. Because you cannot give and give and give and give and give and give without running out. Yes. I bake and it works well because I can include my kids for a while, but then they lose interest and I get to be by myself. Excellent. I like it. Come on, keep throwing them out. Don't make me call on you because I will. When I get to the point where I am totally frazzled and beyond an autopilot, basically, um, there is that point where I'm going to go, you know what? Hope stinks. I'm tired of it. But thankfully, I know I have a prayer group who says, uh-uh, you need to call me. You need to call me right now. And, you know, we might not be just talking about God or whatever, but we just might be something that she says mm -hmm. that's like, she's got me laughing. Mm -hmm. And so I got to remember to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And pull myself out of it because otherwise I'm where I don't want to be. And I know that about myself. So. Excellent. That's what I do. Thank you for sharing because that's so true. Yeah. What, whatever your source is, whether it's God or whether it's nature or whether it's wine, whatever <laughs> it is. Um, and there is a place where we all feel home. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to confuse anybody with trying to think, oh, we're going to talk about religion. Now. Mm -mm. I'd happy to do it with you, but um, there is a place we call home. Mm -hmm. And that's where you have to go. That's where you get back. That's where you get rejuvenated. But sometimes it's really hard. I mean, when everything is coming at you at once, like, mm -hmm. you know, we, we beyond your threes, 
you know, we're all about, oh, three things are going to happen. Well, sometimes it's nine. Okay, and you're like, you got to be kidding me. One more thing, and I'm about ready to go jump in, into King Kong's hands. I don't care what you want to call it. Uh -huh. So that's harder then, but still you got to have to know you have one person you can call up and go, look, I don't care what time it is. Two o'clock in the morning, I need you a voice to go, yeah, you're okay. Boom. Yep. Yep. Does everyone have that? If you don't think about who that is? Because you're, thank you for sharing. That's exactly right. Yes. Well, and I think it's like fair. Like uh, you can kind of have a list and uh, who can you come with when? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's like you can come with some people for fun staff and some other people for an advice or uh, just to be listen, mm -hmm. <laughs> be heard. So uh, it, it's good to identify what exactly you need and have that person reach. Absolutely. Who else wants to share? Thank you. I could tell you were sparking over there. I can see it. It's like coming out. <laughs> well, hello, everyone. Um, what I do, it's uh, I find myself being very disappointed about, uh, with people lately. So uh, it's hard to find people that you can trust nowadays. But one thing that I can do is when I'm able to be present, I enjoy to spend time with my kids. And at uh, night, when they, everyone's asleep, I usually listen to music. And yesterday, I had a really bad day, but what I did is I took a bath at 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you betcha. You betcha. My, my trick, the, 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 the thing I love that always brings me back is um, I, I'll lay outside and watch the stars. The stars get me. Um, they're there forever and have been forever, except for that one shooting one. It turned, it, turned, it turned out it was a firefly a couple weeks ago. It really distressed me. Um, okay. Anybody else want to share? And I ask people to share for two reasons. One, when you say it out loud, it becomes more real. Um, but two, for those people who go, I don't know, it gives you ideas. Bathtub, I can do that. Oh, wait, I didn't do this. So things you can do. Be aware of yourself. Know where you're at. Feel you. Have your barometers. You'll see here that I gave you this that kind of lists out. Some things, I'll walk you through here in a second, so I see I got a few more minutes, yay. Um, find peace in yourself. Um, that book has been remarkable. I've been reading it for over a decade, and in the past oh, seven months, eight months, I write about it to 13 of my friends. What's the title again? Um, the Book of Awake Awakening by a guy named Mark Nepo. And uh, I write about uh, what it means to me to uh, about 13 of my friends every day, and it's totally changed my perspective on the world. Book of Awakening. Nepo, N-E-P-O. Yep. Um, don't lose sight of you. Gosh, mothers, fathers of dogs and children. Sometimes they become our world and we forget us. Take time for you. Um, yes. OK, because that's where I'm at. I'm a mom, but I'm also a social worker by profession. But my thing is, as I'm, being, as I'm being older and trying to figure out what I want to do when I grow up, is that sooner or later, my twins are going to be going to school. And I've been asking the question of me, like, Diane, what are you going to do when you grow up? Because I don't know. I, I used to work the front lines for 20 years, and then I'd stay, stay at home by choice because of therapeutic issues of my kiddos. But I've been asking that question because it's a very important question. Which question? Going back to work. What do you want to know about it? Everyone should work, whether you do it at home or whether you do it, because that's my thing. I know, and I you know, and, and my mom would like to know when I would go back to work too. That's a whole other thing. But anyway, if I ever want to go back to the work world, I would have to figure out what it is I want to do on some level. Absolutely, and my advice, my only advice I have for you, is find something that makes your heart go pitter pat. Oh yeah. I'm I am the luckiest person in the world. I believe I have jobs that I love. I get to play with kids. I get to dance down the hallways with, with highly trained professionals at the Center for Disabilities and Development, and I get to clean up pee and poop. The dogs do. And it doesn't get better than this. And I'm reminded, I am reminded of something I had read um, that I think Barack Obama had put in one of his books about going to NASA and having the janitor there come up and say, I am the reason the astronauts are making it out of here. You know? It doesn't matter what we do. It really doesn't matter what we do. It matters how we do it. So when you, I mean, if, if you love your garden, garden. 
If you love, you know, if you, if you love hanging out with kids in the living room, all the more power to you. Um, but do what you love. Yeah. I got to find that again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, that's just real. Yeah, it's absolutely real. And it creates a lot of stress, mm -hmm. especially when you try to take a round peg and put it in a square hole. Um, that's why I say find what you love. Do it. Yes. I'm glad you said that about gardening. I, I think that we, we get wrapped up into the, um, you have to do something to get paid for it, work. Uh, um, and if a person is in a position that you don't have to get paid for something, that you're, you're good enough, um, that there's so many volunteer opportunities out there that are just as important as a paid position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you have a paid job that isn't really your calling, like you have the golden handcuffs on, then garden, volunteer to garden, volunteer at your shelter, volunteer with kids, be a big brother, be, be, be a big sister, feed your soul. Because if you're not feeding your soul, stress builds. Okay, this good principles I want to share with you. It, it comes from Dr. John McGee, the general teaching stuff. Um, he made sure every interaction that he had with people started off well, okay? That no matter what was going on with that individual, he approached them warmly and made it a positive thing. And then in the middle, because sometimes when, when Pooh's hitting the fan, it's not pretty. He would take a moment and just regroup and, and and add in something that was positive, even if it was in the middle of a shitstorm, okay? And then when it ends, always make sure that you're grateful for whatever happened there, even if it was awful. Be grateful that it's over. And then let go of disturbing emotions. I love it. How many of you have had the day where somebody pulls out in front of you, you hit the brakes, and they have the audacity to show you they don't wear a ring on their middle finger. <laughs> and then you find that you're mad for the rest of the day. You're going, and you've got foam coming from your mouth. And you get into the office and you're still growling and somebody doesn't make the coffee and you're making, it's just, that was three seconds of somebody else's error and we let it decide our whole day. That creates stress, yes. I have something similar happening to me just a few days ago. And the thing is that this person had the audacity of having no sorry on his license plate. <laughs> <laughs> this, I want you to take a quick look at this. This is cheesy. You're going to remember it in the future. You're going to hate it right now. You're going to find yourself looking at it next week. This is how you pay attention to you. Because, you know, we may be human service workers. We may be parents with degrees in psychology. We may be, you know, we've done all the right things. We're, it's the new age era. We're all self-aware, right? Not. Pay attention to where you are. You know, and, and we, every, does every, most everyone in your drive? Yeah, so, you know, pay attention to your feelings. You know, if you overheat your car, what happens? Robert, help these ladies out. <laughs> oh. It doesn't drive. It don't drive. You're sitting on the side of the road. That's a bad day. Same thing true with our feelings. Um, your giving gauge, you got to keep your tank full. When you run out of gas, again, you're sitting on the side of the road. Take a moment right now and think about your feelings. Hopefully they're kind of in the nice cool range. Um, temperature in here is pretty good as well, but hopefully your feelings are there. Your giving gauge, how full are you? How empty are you? It was Cinco de Mayo last night. Somebody made an error. <laughs> so my giving gauge is a little lower than average. Okay. Third one is you got to know where you're going. This is that conspiracy of hope. If you don't know where you're going, you don't have a roadmap, you're not going to go anywhere. You just keep spinning around in circles. And then the life shift shifter. I love this one. This one seems really cheesy, but it's so true. How many of us are living in the past? If only I had. I wish I had. I'm so sorry that happened. Do you remember when? Life goes forward. That's the only way we can go. That doesn't mean we don't look back. And sometimes we don't go, sometimes we end up in neutral. We have to be a neutral to catch our breath. Okay? And of course, the speedometer, we know what happens if we go too fast or we go too slow. It's like the three bears. You gotta find the right one. And then I love this one the steering wheel. I thought this was doing that. 
Um, the steering wheels, you know, you've got to decide. You can change which direction you're going in a heartbeat. But part of this is being in control. Oh, I should tell you about Tonglin. Go back, go back. This is your little Buddhist lesson for the day. Um, how many of us run away from pain? Uh, yeah, the reason high, you fools. We do. Um, the Buddhists say that as soon as we judge something as good or bad, we've judged ourselves. And so the Buddhists would say when there's a challenging situation, instead of trying to fix it or run away from it, be with it. Gather whatever it has to offer you, and it will dissolve itself. Interesting notion. I'll leave that one with you. They say the same thing with joy, love, compassion. My strategy is run away from that stuff, run towards that stuff. That's the golden retriever otter way. Okay? Um, the Buddhists say, be with what it is. Be with the moment. So let's see. Let's see what the masters have to say about this, because I don't think anything I do can be done without going to kind of the core of what is real in the world. So my friends and dogs, I always end with them because they tell me the truth. You want to take care of yourself? Enjoy the simple pleasure of a walk. So often we are walking with, we've got to get there now, we've got to get there now. You know, my lab teaches me every day. <laughs> Hold on, I got to pee on this. I got to. It's like he makes me crazy. And they, you know, they taste all the rabbit poop in the yard and everything. But you know what? They save her life. Enjoy the pleasure of a simple walk. Quit being driven. Take inventory. What's on your plate? Is your mouth simply too full? Can you let go of some of those balls? Or do you need them all? Because if you try to hold them all, it comes bad in a heartbeat. And he's not sorry. <laughs> Be loyal and faithful and quick to forgive. You know, I think the hardest thing for me is when people don't forgive me, and then I realize maybe I haven't done so good at forgiving others. Um, there isn't any crime that's so great that we can't let it go. Okay? Um, find time for yourself every day. If you can't find it, make it. Put it on your schedule. For those of you who are habituated into schedules and into busyness, make time. Put it in your schedule. Drink plenty of water. Drink a lot of water. We're 65% water. Okay? And sometimes it's just best to sit and listen. There's a lot we can hear and learn when we just shut up and listen. I know that's hard for you to believe I would say that, but it's true. It's true. In the quiet comes the answers. Um, and keep digging until you find what you're looking for. Don't give up. That conspiracy of hope is huge. It is what takes stress away. You go, I can keep going. I don't care. Okay? And accept all treats with gratitude. If somebody is nice to you, take a moment and say thank you. I mean, I owe you guys thank you. You guys have been attentive. You've laughed at my jokes. That's huge. <laughs> thank you. Um, you know, you've played with me. You've answered my questions. I like that. Don't ever take the good things in the world for granted. We are so guilty of that. When you drive, I mean, I was, it was remarkable driving over here, looking at the clouds as they cast shadows on the fields and going, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. Um, and when I can step into this space, it's amazing. I was going to my brother-in-law's funeral a couple of years ago. My brother-in-law's funeral, for God's sake. And I'm going, I'm on vacation. It's like, you are wrong and sick woman. You need help. <laughs> but there is beauty in every situation if you look for it. Um, don't try to make your bones someone, somebody else's bone yours. The thing I think we make the biggest mistake in is that we carry everyone else's burdens. Um, we don't, you know, I look at my students or I look at the clients or the people I serve or I look at my coworkers in the world around me and I think I need to carry everyone else's burden. That will kill you. You got enough of your own. Don't carry everyone else's. Remember the sled always goes forward and the view's not always pretty. <laughs> And laugh every day. Laugh every day. And if you don't have anything to laugh about, fake it till you make it. Go on YouTube and look up laughter yoga and do it. OK? Um, love unconditionally. It's all we got. It really is all we got. You know, because really, we really are all more alike than we are different. Um, 
Some of us are more different than others. Back to the otters. Um, and the golden retrievers. Um, and friendships are, are unusual but sacred. And there's our beaver. So I'll close with a, one of my favorite artists, a guy named Brian Andreas. He's from Decorah, or we islands. Um, and I love this. Anyone can slay a dragon, he told me. But trying to wake up every morning and loving the world all over again, that's what takes a real hero. And you guys are all heroes. That's what you have to remember each and every day that you go out. And as soon as you, you know, set down the armor and take on your hero, put on your hero hat, the stress is different. It's still there, but it's different. Well, then, thank you guys for taking this beautiful Saturday. Um, as soon as you can, get out of here and go outside and watch the clouds drift over the fields today. They're beautiful. And uh, do something for yourself. Write down one thing. That's your assignment. Write down on that paper one thing you're going to do for yourself to reduce your stress. All right, you guys, thank you all so much for uh, coming and playing with me today. Have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you.